no thoughts. Hold on. What was I saying? What am I even saying? I'm literally working with one brain cell. No, no, we're good. Okay. Or will we be able to blast the AC, please? Yeah. I'm sweating today. They look shiny though. They look like like highlighted. Oh, I'm talking about this. You can't even see because it's folding over. Because well, your tits are so massive. I have to say though, I feel like oh donuts. My. Ramble. Pretty basic. Hey guys, what's up? It's Alicia. I just wanted to let you know that if you have not yet got the Pretty Basic merch. You should definitely do that right now, prettybasic.com. Um, honestly, I think the one that I've been wearing the most right now are the black sweatpants. I love them. I wear them every day. On well, not every day. Every other day, though. I really do wear them every other day. Thank you to Factor, Starface, and Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Let's get it, friends. Let's get it, homies. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pretty Basic. We are in the studio. We kind of look like a little gender reveal right now. Oh my God. He or she, what will it be? What will it be? And when I threw Shane and Lily's gender reveal, I don't remember where that was. Oh, I think they put that on like the balloon signage or something. And Ollie oh. and I the whole day were like, he or she, what will it be? And we still do it all the time. Oh my God, that's so funny. But um, hi, we're back. <laughs> she didn't think it was actually funny. Oh my God, that's so funny. Oh my God, Anyways. That's so funny. I, that's one of my problems. I really do think it's funny. Thank you so much. No, it's just that chuggy like slogan saying, you know? Oh, like a good Pinterest. Like a live, laugh, love. A Canva. I found it on Canva. I think Canva. that's where I found it. I love Canva. What's some of the best ones? Live, laugh, love. I feel like, let me look them up. This no, those are two different things though. But I'm just like, like two like, different, like you can't put he or she, what will it be with yeah, live, just, laugh, love. But it just reminds me. Love of, lives here. Okay. <laughs> Anything you can find at, oh, but first coffee. Anything you can find at home goods. I feel like live, laugh, love is on that. No, he or she, what will it be is so much cuter than live, laugh, love. Life happens, wine helps. Yes, <laughs> yes. Why not? Oh my God, I love going to home goods and reading them. This one I was like, trying to like read it and it goes, it's as proud to be chooky. <laughs> True. Okay, wait, this is so fun. When life gives you lemons, add salt and tequila. Oh, I what did you Google? I just looked up chuggy signs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you go to Home Goods and read any sign there, it'll be home, so good. Chuggy home Chuggy <laughs> Home. Oh my God. Um, Be bold. Like the chuggy people got a hold of the word chuggy and now it's become chugalicious. Chugalicious dev. I kind of like that. Wow. Well, welcome back, you guys. We are here. I know last week we did the first ever deleted episode. <gasps> and I have to say, you guys loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't come out yet. Come Thank out. you so much for all the warm <laughs> wishes and love on last week's episode. Oh, my, it's giving um, so many people requested this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone's been asking about my skincare routine. No. So we have held that episode. It did go up. Hopefully you guys liked it. We actually had a different episode recorded, but for specific issues, we're not able to release it now, mm -hmm. but hopefully in the near future, it will be able to come out. It totally will. It will for sure. And I, I did a little intro for that video, but I just have to sit here and apologize for how much I was being a little sassy little thing. Um, I don't remember, but it's okay. Perfect. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to Pretty Basic. Today we're in the studio and I'm just so excited to be here, but I also, I wanted to do a little check-in. Okay. In all seriousness, I know you're exhausted right now. Oh my God. I'm currently operating with um, maybe like 5%. So I apologize. I feel like I am floating. I'm hallucinating right now. So I'm sorry. I'm trying to bring it right now for the episode, but um, yeah, I, no sentence is going to be a complete proper sentence today. I was going to say, we can do a chill episode and like turn down the lights and oh, cozy, but you might fall asleep. Turn down the <laughs> lights. Yeah. I would love that. Let's do it. I would fall asleep. Yeah. Actually, no, keep we the can lights do an on. ASMR episode. One day we will. Um, But yeah, I am very tired. I'm going to need you to guide the convo because. Oh, I'm guiding it. Like, okay. Oh my God. I've always wanted to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. How are you really doing, Remy? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I'm exhausted. Let me back it up though. Thank you for asking. It really goes well with our merch, which you can get at prettybasic.com. Oh we have God, some, how are you, how are you really merch? Very cute. Mm -hmm. um, but on the outside, 
I feel as though I look like I'm doing well. No, you look great. Thank you so much. On the like, inside, I'm not doing well. The hair, the glam, like you look great. Like you honest, I look like I got less sleep than you, I feel like. <laughs> no, you look amazing. No, I walked in a hot mess. It's so hot outside. The boob sweat is boob sweating. It's and hot. The bangs are not banging. It's like a hundred degrees today. I'm looking as though I'm doing okay on the outside. On the inside, I'm not doing so hot. But I feel like that is the point of asking, how are you? How are you really? Mm -hmm. Because everybody says, fine, I'm good. But inside, we might not be doing fine or good. And I myself am not doing fine or good. In the past week, I have lost my childhood dog. I know. I forgot. I know. It's okay. I mean, I'm such a bad friend. No, you were there for me when it happened. I know, but I like completely forgot about it. It's okay. It's totally fine. But I I was like, do I talk about this on YouTube or not? I was like, I don't know. It's kind of like random news for people that don't care. Oh. But then I was thinking, I was like, her name was Lila, big lie. She, um, I got her when I was in eighth grade and I started my YouTube channel when I was in like 10th grade. So obviously I was like, I don't know if anybody's still watching from the beginning, but if they were, oh, then I'm you sure. know, big lie. She passed away peacefully in her sleep, but it was my first dog that I've ever lost. And obviously I had like Henry, my turtle and like snakes and things, but losing a dog obviously is like very, very different. So that sucked but she's in a better place i have to say like the saddest thing my mom took her to be cremated and she took her oh my god i'm gonna cry just talking about this she took her to the cremation place because she wanted to make sure it was done like as soon as possible and just you know lila was resting peacefully and so she said she took her there and parked under the shade and held her paw and told her to wait for her I, like she called me and I, cr- I cried i know i'm doing better now and i she oh lived a long life she lived 15 years she had a m- 15 amazing years she ate so many chocolate cakes in her lifetime she was a little food piggy as am I. She would just like eat everything in sight. And like, I, I don't, I don't know if I ever told you this. Chocolate story? Yes. Oh did I, did I say that story here? I think you did a long time I'm ago. sure I did, but I'll just, this one's for Lila. She was an evil genius. I remember when like swaps were really big back in the day on YouTube, mm-hmm. like you would, um, you know, have a friend who was a YouTuber in like a, an international country or somewhere else and you would do a swap. So like I did the swap with this girl named Emily Canham, who is still making content. Emily, I love yes. Emily. Oh, she's iconic. And this was like 2010, maybe it was, oh no, no, maybe like 2012. It was forever ago though. And so she was so nice. She still is so nice, but we did a swap and um, I obviously like bought her a bunch of American treats and things. So I got her like Skittles, Hershey's, just like things that to us seem so normal, but obviously somewhere else it's a little bit foreign. Mm. So I got her like a whole box of stuff and she made me a whole box in the UK and then we shipped it to each other. But I remember with mine, there were so many issues with the like custom situation. Mm. So there were like, it was delayed. I remember it got sent back to me at one point. I tried to send it again. I felt so horribly because hers got to me with no problem. So she sent me this giant box, but I was waiting for her to get hers and she was so nice and patient. And I still feel badly to this Mm. day that it took so long. And hers came so quickly that I just sat it by the front door for like a weeks on end while she was waiting to get hers. And so it just sat there for weeks. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't know it was inside obviously either. It's a surprise. We ended up going on vacation and we packed up the car and my aunt was going to watch Lila while we were gone. And she was going to be like an hour later after we left though, which obviously you could just leave her for an hour. So I remember we packed up the car. We made it like halfway down the street and my mom was like, oh shoot, I forgot my phone. So we turned around. By the time we got back in the house, Lila had ripped open the box, <laughs> ate all the chocolate inside, all the candy inside and ruined the package. But also I was like, what a devious little devil. Well, she waited until she knew we packed our suitcases and we were leaving. Oh no, she was pissed. She was ready. And, she waited. And the box was there how long? Weeks? Weeks. <laughs> she knew. She she was waiting. So she was a little evil genius. I love her so much. I miss her dearly. She's my sister. And that was rough. And then right now I'm operating on like two hours of sleep. Oh, I also threw my back out with you yesterday. No, I thought you were actually <laughs> joking when I tell you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like you just like lean down and then you like, it looked like a dance move. Like you were like a <laughs> body roll. Yeah. And then she like snapped and she's like, my back just spasmed. I was like, that was a spasm. My like low vertebrae spasm. So right now I'm in a lot of pain. And then <laughs> yesterday my brother went into surgery for 
this issues that the issue that he was having with his back in the morning. And obviously he has a new baby, which adds a whole level of complexities. My mom went over super early in the morning to uh, go take care of the baby. And I think she got there like 4.30 in the morning. So she was up early, was with the baby all day. My brother got out of surgery and was home by like noon. And then by six, we were hanging out right when my back spasmed. Yeah. Maybe it was like the universe yeah. telling me something was wrong. I checked my phone and he had like a major complication with the surgery. So we had to go back to the ER. He had called my mom to come over and, and watch the baby again, but she was already so tired. My dad had to drive her. And then I started worrying about everyone, obviously. And so he had to go back to the ER, find out that he had to go back under again to get surgery again. I didn't know you were hours even later. able to do that. I didn't either. I mean, I've never been in a situation where I've had to go under twice in 20. Like, I feel like that can't be good. It can't be good. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea, but he went back under at midnight and I called you at like 11 or so. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the studio tomorrow. And you were so great. And like stepped in, she's like, I got it. I'll do a solo. I'll pull someone in. She was so nice. And my mom wasn't picking up and I knew she'd probably fall asleep because she was so yeah. tired. So I started packing my bags and then Shane called me and Lily was crying and they were freaking out. Cause they're like, we don't want to bother your mom, but obviously like she's tired. And yeah. you know, so I was like, don't worry, I'm already going. So I packed up my bags, went over there. I already knew <laughs> that mom's dad's parental figures are absolute superheroes. Holy fucking <laughs> shit. How do like single parents, parents, a duo of parents, mm -hmm. single parents, how do they do it? Also working jobs. Like I already knew obviously like it's gotta be hard. I had one night, I, that was enough birth control for me <laughs> for like a decade. Wait, so Shane and Lily, obviously were at the hospital. They were at the hospital. He got surgery again for the second time at midnight. So you went to help your mom watch the baby. Yes, I got there at midnight and the baby was sleeping and he's so cute. Oh. Also, I've never, I don't know if I've said his name, his name's Holden and Holden was sleeping, he was so cute. And then I was texting Lily and she was so worried obviously. He's only two and a half months. Yeah. And so that's, it's, that's a lot on you who just gave birth two and a half months ago. And so she gave me all these instructions and I was trying to help my mom, but I ended up not being much help, honestly. I was more of like moral support. No, just knowing you're there. Wait, was, was your trying. mom shocked when you were there? Yeah. She was just like, what are you doing here? She didn't want me there because I know she like, she's someone who doesn't like to ask for help. Yeah. And I was like, too bad. I'm here. So yeah. put me to work. But then she, I told her to go to bed and I just kind of stood there at the baby and I was like, what do I do? <laughs> like, actually, like I, I truly didn't no, know. I know I no, I know. And I felt so inept because I'm like, I'm the older sister and I have no idea what to do. And so Lily was so sweet and she was, oh, she was a superstar. She, um, Shane was in surgery. She was like, I'm in the car. I'm watching a movie. I'm just waiting for them to tell me that I can go in and see him. I'll give you all these instructions, go to the kitchen. The instructions are there and like walked me through everything and like was already obviously anxious about Shane and anxious about leaving the baby. Oh so God. she was a superhero and I was up every two hours to to feed him, my mom helped a lot too again, but I really wanted to just like try and help her because yeah. she was doing so much. Um, but yeah, we were up every two hours. He's also like already doing so much better. I'm sure if parents are listening to this, you know. They're smiling like, ha ha, like this is like, you get it now. You know, they're the parents. <laughs> you know, we don't get it. Well, you know, like when you are, I'm sure like when I'm a mom, they're gonna be like, oh, just wait for this. Yes. Like, I can wait, <laughs> I understand a, a, a lick of it now, but I was up at 1 30, 3 30, 6 30 8 and that's like my mom was like that was a wonderful night I was like <laughs> you're like that was wonderful <laughs> I barely slept because even when he was sleeping I was too scared to like knock Holy out like, because yeah. I was worried I was like well what if he doesn't cry loud enough and I don't hear him and he needs me so yeah it was a lot I commend all parents parental figures you are superheroes I, I can't do it again no I remember the first time I like not was watching a kid, but basically it was like watching a kid. I just mm -hmm. remember thinking like the universe lets this happen. Like why, like, how am I allowed to do this? Yeah. I don't feel like I'm an adult. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, and we're not yeah. like, we're not, no. we are, but we're not, <laughs> we are, but we're not. And I, I know it's so different when you have your own kids yeah. and you know, I, I know that's completely different, but yeah, even, even when we were in Japan and I was watching Yuka's kids, um, with Ashley, I remember, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. No. And like, also I know parents don't technically know what they're doing either. And like, that's like the, so much stress of it, but I props to all of them. Also with an infant, I mean, I I would babysit as a kid and I was like a nanny sometimes, but like they were usually like older five, yeah, yeah three or older. So no, with like, an infant, 
You got to watch the neck. You got to be careful. He can't lay on his back too long. He can't be on his stomach too long. He can't be head flattening. I'm just like, there's so many things and they can't do anything. Yeah. Like I knew they can't do it, but they can't do anything anything i know this like people parents are laughing at me right now that oh this is like the craziest no, a thing thousand percent but also i don't i forget i don't i don't think you did either hmm. did you grow up with like no. babies much? this no, is no, the no. first time i've ever been around an infant for this long okay so this is why we're friends because i i too haven't and like i never had extended family with i was always the baby of the family yeah even extended family so yeah. And I don't live close to other family who, you know, they have kids and stuff, but yeah. I never, we've never grown up with. Yeah. It's just Shane and I. PB babysits. We should start a, actually we should not start a babysitting. <laughs> but okay. Here's the thing. As I was driving over here, I was thinking, I was like, don't want a kid anytime soon. And this was, a, it, you know what? I saw him a few days ago and I only saw him for an hour. And then I took myself to Starbucks because I worked so You're hard. Like, I'm uh, tired. And I, I need a break. But like, that's the beauty of being an aunt. I can leave when I want. I can come when I want. Oh yeah. But obviously in a dire situation. And I left that situation being like, oh my God, I want a kid so badly. After last night, I'm like, I am good. But I know if it came down to it and I got pregnant and I wanted to keep it, I would absolutely step up. Like I know that for sure. Oh, but I was just like, whoa last night your life truly is changed forever Mm -hmm. like forever even something as dumb as this but like i'll scroll on my tiktok all night long Mm -hmm. because i have no responsibilities other than myself and the dogs Mm -hmm. and even cal splits that with me more than i do it (laughs) but like you know i don't have the leisure to i didn't have the leisure to scroll on my phone because if he was sleeping i was like okay i gotta get as much sleep as i possibly can right now because he's gonna wake up again soon and then my like my life was revolving around him for one night again commend the parents oh my that's God. all Especially i can say single parents no i know that's what my mom and i are talking about and i know We're your like, priorities just change like i know it's just something snaps and you're like you know what my priorities are completely different i don't care about xyz i'm sure it's hard too because you always hear a lo- some moms not all of them but some moms struggle when they get older of being like wow i feel like i've lost myself how do yeah. i find myself again and i can't imagine how you don't low-key lose yourself a little bit because you basically like you're living you drop everything yeah. to care for a baby or even two especially again if you're a single parent like that's it's so much and it's like you you step up and you prioritize and that is incredible and again you are a superhuman but also it doesn't make it any easier like i i truly am baffled what i hate so much is when i hear other people who are single and don't have kids and they bash on moms or like being like, oh my God, I'll never let myself like lose myself after having a kid. Or like they say my life's going to change, but like, I'm still going to care about work or blah, yeah. blah, blah. like, and I'm like one, unless you experience it, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. Why are you shitting on other people? Mm-hmm. Like, why are you making it about like, oh my God, it it's not about me you. It pisses me <laughs> off so much. And I'm like, hello, this person just had a brought human life into the world. Mm-hmm. Like they brought life into the no, world. I completely agree. It's, it's like, it blows my mind. I mean, I will say it has gotten better. I feel like just with social media and being able to see like, you know, things that Real we don't people. say anymore. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is so embarrassing. But recently I had no idea things about birth that I had no idea about until I got older or just, it was talked about more. I love scrolling on TikTok and like seeing like birth things and like all that stuff. I find it so fascinating. When you were in health class, did they make you watch a live birth video? Oh no. <gasps> oh, we've talked about this. Yeah. That's right. My school never did anything like that. Cause I'm it like, was just abstinence, right? It was like, oh yeah. That, did not, no, don't even have sex. We don't even need, need to think I about mean, if you were birth. married, obviously it's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay. but yeah we never had like crazy like videos we had to watch I or anything like that birth. that's great i would have loved but i that. blacked it out i can't re- i just remember being scared oh my god i had no idea how bad like pushing out the placenta is that's a lot of people describe that as worse pain than actually giving birth i think about often how you are not going to get an epidural and i worry for you because shoot me the fuck up here's the thing i cannot say what i'm gonna do and everyone has a different story everyone is so everyone can do whatever they want i don't care if people want an epidural or not i just know the fact that if my mother didn't have one and she's like, like, I'm just, my competition in me is like, I just want to try not to have it. But I know an hour and I'm going to be like, stab me. Yeah. <laughs> well, also I know everybody has a birth plan. And like most of the time, the birth plan does not yes. go as planned. Well, for like so many reasons. Oh my God. Just that. Even like, even C-section. I just want a healthy baby and like whatever Absolutely. that takes. But, um, well, God forbid though, I think, I think it was Cal's mom. Someone's mom that I know said no epidural and then it was like i want it and they're like it's too late too late yes so I heard that too i'm no just no i will be I've ready you, i've told you i don't know if i told pretty basic this before but 
or maybe I have, I still want my mom to come on because literally like she has so many amazing stories. But so she had Ashley first, obviously. And when she had me, I came so quick. Like literally she was like, oh, I'm having some cramps. I think I'll drive myself to the hospital, right? My dad's still out in Temecula working like a good hour away, okay? So she literally just drives herself, do, 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 do. And I know it's so different when you have a second kid or like multiple. Like they, they just, just like come slide out. out. Yeah. Like, yeah. So she gets there and the front desk is like, hi, how can we help you? She's like, oh, you know, I... I don't know. I think I think it might be in labor. I'm not really sure. <laughs> then they go, oh, honey, if you just started feeling contractions, like you have a good, good day or two. And she's like, can I see my nurse or doctor? And they're like, oh, well, your doctor's not in, but this other person is. And she's like, okay, that'd be perfect. Can I wait for them? And they're like, yeah, sure. They literally lay her down. They look, I believe she was at nine centimeters. I fucking Do you kid. push it 10? Yeah. At Holy 10. shit. I fucking kid you. Know, I was like, one, mom, how did you not feel that? Two, she said the second the, their, their eyes got so big and they're like, holy shit, they were running around and people kept checking in like, on her. Like, are you okay? Yeah, like, red, like everything. Like, buttons. where's the doctor? My dad drives an hour in. And she said she was just kind of like laughing because she's like, I just know I have time and like, it'll be fine or yeah. whatever. Something with birth I didn't know is that you start dilating so early or you, I, maybe it's probably situational, but like, I think- Someone in my life started dilating like a month or a few, like three weeks or so early, but like they were at like one or two for like Wait, a few weeks. I didn't know it was, so, is, I thought. Is PB smarter than birth anything? We need a gyno like, up in oh here. Oh my God, or like a, um, a doula. Oh my God, I would <gasps> love to experience that. I think I would do a home birth. I know that might sound crazy. I think I would. I think everyone should do what they want. Also my friend, she's pregnant right now. She was telling me that her sister-in-law did this, but she did like a birthing center. So it's not in your home, but it's in a center, but it's not a hospital, but they have basically a hospital equipment. Oh, wow. So, and she was like, it's really nice because all my appointments, I can just go lay down on an actual bed and it's like more homey. I, and well, I'm so sorry. When I think of home birth, I think of like, um, <laughs> like a movie where the, like a, a pool in the middle of the living room. Oh yeah. That, is that would, like what it is? That's one way to do. It. I think okay. they have like other things, but sh her sister-in-law is a nurse and she was like, yeah, I've seen so many things go wrong in the hospitals. Like oh. I, she, the nurse chose to do it at home. Obviously other nurses would choose to do it, whatever. So it's just one perspective, but oh. I just thought it was so interesting. So my whole like explore page on Instagram is like the weirdest shit. Like there's like home births and all this stuff. And I'm like, it's kind of interesting. I personally, I always just thought like it'd be safer to do it at a hospital because you think they're more equipped, but that's an interesting perspective. No, totally. It's just weird how it's like, even that we're allowed to like have a kid in our home. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I, I have high thoughts all the time without being high and I'm just like, let's get my, how does the world let us <laughs> br like just have a kid at home? But like, that's natural. That's normal. No. Yeah. Like it's crazy. That is a part of life. Crazy. I know. Okay guys, so it's summer and I don't know about you, but I've been a busy bee lately. I haven't been home. I've been driving so much out and about all around. And with summer, all I want is convenient meals that don't sacrifice on quality or nutrition so that I can keep spending time enjoying the sun, running my errands, driving around. See, lately I think I've been home and I'm just lazy. And that's totally fine. You want to sit out by the pool all day. You don't want to spend your time going inside and cooking and no, going to the grocery store. I'd rather be on my couch just chilling on my phone. Love that. Than cooking a meal. Love that. Well, Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You guys, these are absolutely so convenient. I have them stacked in my fridge and both Cal and I have been eating them because Cal also, he's been working so much and he doesn't have a ton of time to like make lunch every day. So it's absolutely great. If you work from home or if you go to the office, you can bring it with you. Or if you're just sitting out by the pool and you want to just eat a meal. I think my favorite, I haven't had them all, obviously, but I think the shrimp one's my favorite. That one's so good. So good. What's so great about them is they're fresh, never frozen meals that are ready in just two minutes of heating. There's 34 plus weekly restaurant quality options like bruschetta, shrimp, risotto, green goddess chicken. I love green goddess chicken and grilled steakhouse filet mignon. Have your lunch to go. There's effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. There's calorie smart meals, there's protein plus meals, and there's also sustainable choices. And Factor offsets 100% of their delivery emissions, sources 100% renewable electricity for production sites and offices, and features sustainably sourced seafood in the meals. So overall, you guys need to head to factormeals.com slash basic50 and use code basic50 to get 50% off. That's code basic50 at factormeals.com slash basic50 to get 50% off. I have to tell you, I woke up yesterday and I went to the gym really early 
early. And then I went straight to an appointment after. So I was gone for like four hours or so. Mm -hmm. And I noticed people were just like extra smiley at me. And like, I don't know why I was just like, oh my God, I'm on fire today. I got home and totally had forgotten. I put a blue star face smack dab in the middle of my face. (laughs) And I didn't realize that it was there. I mean, I love it because obviously it's so cute, but I was like, oh my God, I think that's why people were being like extra smiley at me because it's just so cute. Wait, I love that. I had no idea. And also I'm not even kidding. I woke up and I had like a raging whitehead. So I put it on there. And by the time that I took it off, I swear it had minimized so much. No, Remy, when I, I never break out. The other day I had like three and I was like, what is going on? They were deep, they hurt. I was like, oh my God, it's been so long. So what did, I literally got out my star face pebble patches. I put three on, I go to bed, I wake up. They are over 50% gone. I don't know about you guys, but I can't scroll through Instagram or TikTok without seeing these cute little star-shaped pimple patches from Starface. So many celebrities are wearing them. They're so good. If you haven't heard, the Hydro Stars, they're made with 100% hydrocolide, which means that they're great for absorbing fluid and minimizing any redness while they shrink your spots. They come in a really cute case. I literally have like a different case in each one of my bags because my skin has been kind of breaking out a little bit more lately and they are just so cute to throw on. And they also have a new addition to the compact collection, the Big Blue, which is the one that I put on my pimple yesterday. It comes with 32 of Starface's Hydro Stars with salicylic acid patches, which truly were absolutely amazing. And then they also have other fun colors and limited edition drops. So if you guys haven't checked them out, you have to. If you're ready to start celebrating and decorating your pimples, you can shop the entire Starface collection at starface.world. And for a limited time, all Pretty Basic listeners are getting 15% off their first purchase when you enter the code basic at checkout. Again, that's 15% off your first starface.world order with the code basic. Back to Shane. Sorry. He's doing well. No, 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 no. I was like, oh, I wonder if they're wondering if he's okay. I don't know if anyone even cares. He's doing fine. Okay. He's doing better. Is But he like, is he okay? How he's, was the second surgery? I think okay. okay. Then there was another complication this morning. So they do, do they know what's going on? Like, is it? I don't know. I was busy ba- watching a baby. I'm just You're like, um, I don't know. <laughs> no, he's, I had bottles. He's back home. He's like resting, okay. hopefully. I mean, I think only time will tell, but it's been a week. Oh my And God. then I have other stuff going on, obviously, like with my personal life that has just been adding. So it's just been like a lot, but overall I'm doing okay. I got home yesterday though, before any of this, like even baby stuff happened. And I was like, when my back was hurting, <laughs> I was leaning down and Cal came down. He was like, are you okay? And I was like, I just feel like a lot of shit's going wrong right now. And that was before you even got the call. Before I manifested it. No, don't say that. Um, it's okay. Shane's like, Remy, why? I, <laughs> it's okay. It like, I feel like this is just how life is. Like it ebbs, it flows. Sometimes there's a lull. And that's why Sometimes it's hard when things are good to enjoy that they're good. Agreed. Because I, I know I can be anxious, but it's so hard when life's good to not worry about like, well, what's going to happen? Or yeah. like, oh my God, I'm going to jinx it. And I've been trying to get better when life is good to just appreciate it. Or even if I just have a good day being like, wow, today was good. Like, <laughs> thank God, because we've oh, been for through sure. some, you know? I like also always think, and I've thought this since I was a kid, I'm like the most glass half full person <laughs> that exists. And like, even when I was a kid and like something went really bad, I'd always, like, I'd always think, well, tomorrow, there's no way tomorrow can be worse. So tomorrow's just going to be better. And I've had that mentality since I was a child. And I think that every day, sometimes obviously it gets worse, but that's okay. You just got to think it's going to get better. And if it doesn't, then the next day will get better. I mean, life without hope is very dark, <laughs> but without I'm going to have that. That was a home life good sign. Life without, home good sign. <laughs> life without hope is, but who wants to hang that in their house? No, it's good. It's remembering it's to like, have hope. It's dark. Yeah. So wait, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. I'm I noticed okay. you were like low energy yesterday. <laughs> really? I thought we had a wonderful day together. No. Oh, are you kidding? I was th- I was like, and I was like, oh my god. Oh, at the pod. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt like I was just like I I really fucked up. We went on Victoria Brown's podcast yesterday, and I love her. Oh my god, I called her Garrick on the thing. Oh, it's fine, Victoria Garrick Brown. But uh, we went on her podcast, and she was fantastic. And the problem with going on other people's podcasts sometimes it's like sometimes you really just nail it and you're like wow that was so good and sometimes you're like that was not my best work and you feel badly because obviously not every podcast if ours is going to be a banger mm-hmm. but it's our podcast that's okay <laughs> when you go on someone else's you're like I only had one shot and yesterday I was low energy but I realized I was just tired so I drank an energy drink at 4 p.m I was like fuck now I'm gonna be up all night but then Mm -hmm. the baby needed me. So it's like, so it all worked out. I apologize to Victoria Garrick Brown. If I, no, you were fine. You were fine to make you feel better. If you've been having a bad week, I was just talking to a friend yesterday because she was over helping me film and 
we were talking about you because I love you so much. And oh I was just God. like, I was like, Rem feels like kind of old Rem to me again. <gasps> like she just like, something's like you're glowing. Like you just seem like, which is funny because you're saying you had a worst week of your life in a long time. Wait, but that's so nice. No, and I was like, yeah, I should, I should actually tell her that because I've noticed that. Like, I just feel like you... I don't know. I think it's being properly medicated. Me seeing you. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Is Wait, but that's so nice. Yeah. I feel like I've, I think for a while I was really, I felt like I was being like kind of bitchy a lot. I don't think you're being bitchy. I felt you were just like in the motions. Mm, I see you know that. What I mean? Like yes. very, like there's just a lot going on. Yeah. And even, I don't know, like I loved yesterday how we were just like driving I had and so much fun. Same. And I was like, wait, I missed this. I feel like for a while I thought that if something's, and I guess this is just like a testament to like, we all go through this at some point in our lives, but I felt like there was a lot going on that any small thing that was added, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like with my whole life in general, I was like, this is just too much. I even like thought about, I didn't think about quitting social media because I don't know what else I would do. <laughs> and I do love it, but it was also just like, okay, well really thinking about and you know, I'm not a planner, not a dreamer, but I was really like, okay, well, if I were to stop, what am I gonna do? Like mm -hmm. I could see myself maybe because I felt like it was just like getting to be a lot and I was getting overwhelmed, but I do feel much better lately. Good. Thank you so much. That makes me happy. Also, I don't know what I would do without so nice. cooking with Remy. So thank God. Your episode is slamming. Oh my God, yes. It's doing so well. Oh my God. People loved it. Like Remy leaving, I can't imagine social media without Miss Remy Ashton. Without cooking with Remy. Without cooking with Remy. <laughs> You're my biggest fan. No, I'm so being nice. dead serious. Like if you were to ever quit. Okay, so did you actually have a moment thinking what you would do? Um, no, I didn't get that far to be honest. <laughs> oh, wait. Because I really can't. What else can I do? You're like, I'm not a good are, babysitter. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm banned. Oh, yeah, you are banned. <laughs> I would go. I don't know what I would do. I mean, I obviously, like, if I really did need to stop for my mental health or for my just, like, well-being, I would really take a break. Um, and I would figure something else out. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't get to that point. But I was more so just, like, starting to ponder, which I'm not a ponderer. So that's why I was like whoa this is crazy just like getting a call in two seconds and like news happens and you're like whoa what's going on like your life could be dr drastically different in one year two years and I think also just getting older and you know you're in a committed relationship like even just thinking about the future that way it's like it's crazy thinking holy shit like where am I going to be in three years it's not that far when you're younger three years sounds like forever like it's like yeah. oh my god that's so far yeah. like three years feels like 10 years when you're younger I and now been thinking like about so quick. Oh yeah. Like that'll come by so quickly. Mm -hmm. I have been thinking about this a lot. I hate getting older mm -hmm. because as I've gotten older, I've only developed more anxiety about the people around me and their health and their well being. I mean, I got older and my dog died. I got older and my family member got cancer. I got older and Shane, I'm so scared for Shane to go under anesthesia. And then he has to go under again. I'm just like, I used to be like, it's fine. Cause yeah. I feel like I was in my la la land. I was like in my early twenties, like it's all about me. And now as I'm older, I'm like becoming more aware and I feel like maturing. And also just, I've obviously also had a lot more years now with my family, which obviously I've always loved my family, but like as time goes on, you just grow stronger, deeper mm -hmm. relationships. Um, I mean, seeing my brother become a dad, I'm like, oh my fucking God, if anything happens to him, like what's going to happen to the baby? Like it just sucks i can't older. imagine ashley having a kid and like thinking that way yeah you know he texted me so he's like he was kidding but he's like if anything happens to me like this this, this and i was like don't even joke yeah because i am already losing sleep over this yeah and like obviously i'm worried about getting older for myself too because our health deteriorates and things happen but like m more than myself i'm so worried about the people around me oh my god and it just inevitably happens because we get older and I hate it. I know, but it is weird when you used to see your parents as like superheroes who are invincible and now they just seem weak and fragile. I'm always like, text me when you're home. Like, All the time. Like it's weird. I get so stressed. Even like with my mom becoming a grandma before the baby came, she started like really worrying about her health. Like she's always been, my parents are like so healthy and they're so fit and they've always really taken mm. care of themselves. But she was like extra hyper vigilant about what she's putting into her body and all these sorts of things, like making sure to, to drink enough water, just like little things obviously that just will help you hopefully live and a longer life. Not for cosmetic reasons. Yes. Because I feel like that's especially, I would say 25 of my 30 years have all been like, oh my God, I need to drink water so I can like look good or I need to do this to do this. And it is weird getting to that point where you're like, wow, I just actually want to have a healthier life. Yeah. So even and it's just the nice, thought of having refreshing. a new generation like that, I feel like for my family was really crazy. We're like, oh my, like my grandma's 
still here. Love her so much. So we have four generations That's living, amazing. which is cool. But I'm just like, new generations are coming in. You you want to live for as long as you can with them. It's weird. It is weird. It's another high thought that I like, don't like to think about. We got to get high sometimes. I would love to do a high episode. Did we ever talk about Let's Get Munchin? I'm sure we did. I didn't even post it. I posted it. Let's get munchin. <laughs> Alicia got really high and then absolutely ravaged through my, my pantry. No, like I was a little rat. It was so. <laughs> <laughs> me and Aaron and Murph. Well, thank you so much for asking me about how I'm doing. Now I would like to ask you how you're doing, but I would like to also cut in and just say, I'm so, so sorry that your dear friend is going through a divorce. <laughs> Oh my God, I've literally never talked about this. I know, but I was driving over and I was hearing about it on my podcast. I was listening to it and I was like, oh, we must talk about this today. And I also still want to know how you're really doing. So would you like to start with the, the funny joke or the real joke? Yeah, we can start with the funny one. Okay. Okay, but like, oh, I don't like, I'm like, I don't want to make people uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable, but Alicia's dear friend is getting a divorce and no. it's all over the news. We're literally not friends. No, they're not friends. We I'm just, just kidding. We just, I just remember one day, <laughs> seeing I was like Ariana Grande is dating this guy and I was like I think I went to high school with him <laughs> <laughs> so I literally I'm like I'm like 99% sure I went to high school with this guy and the next thing I know they're like engaged I was like whoa what's going on and then are I, you Facebook friends no no, no damn no, no. No, that's no. that's a new yeah level. we're not like never said a word to each other he was a year younger than me but I remember the day I saw that I was like I oh, he was a year younger than yeah, you he was a year oh. younger. so we like we truly never talked but I remember I was like, I'm about, I never go on Facebook. I was like, I'm going on Facebook because I need to see. My whole timeline was literally, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. I'm going to start up, get allegedly merch. That's allegedly. My, allegedly That's merch. Good. Multiple people that I went to high school with literally were like, not my high school bully <gasps> dating Ariana Grande. Yeah. Allegedly that allegedly happened. That happened. Allegedly and that happened. And I remember happen. being like, damn so like this for sure is that guy bitch that's gonna get clipped on the ariana fan page hi ari no but that's why i'm like uh also i'm sure everybody knows even lana del rey knows that i am ariana's <laughs> biggest fan as she did whisper in my ear i know you're an ariana fan but i love you so <laughs> everyone was like the whole world whispering? knows that i love ariana oh and no so we this do was, we this love her for me we but. love her but that was funny i was like what is happening like this is also i went to a very small private christian school yeah. like the smallest like you would never even in like a very small town he, is he from that town i have no idea truly I, I know nothing about him but i just remember being like this is funny like he's handsome too so i feel like you would remember his face Oh, I just, I literally never said anything because I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be that person. And I remember meeting his sister and his sister was so nice. Oh my God. She, okay, okay. Let me tell this from my perspective. We're at Coachella and we were by the bar and I walked away for some reason. And then when I turned away or came back, Alicia was talking to this stunning girl. Stunning. And I, stunning. anytime that happens, I'm like, why do you watch Every my time. Videos? I'm like, you want, you watch me. Do you have a link? I can watch you. <laughs> and she was saying something, something, something. And I like came in halfway through and I don't know exactly what you both said, but I picked up that she was Ariana's sister-in-law and my face went, <laughs> and I was in my head, I was like, play it cool, play it cool, play it cool, play it cool. And then the conversation very quickly ended after. And then we walked away and you were like, you did really well. No, I literally was like, <laughs> I can tell Remy's for you. I, like you looked like a blank face. You had your sunglasses on, but your mouth is never a straight line. It was literally like, <laughs> I was like, I could so make this weird, but I won't. Oh my gosh. Has it actually been said they're getting a divorce? Yeah. Okay. And I, didn't apparent, know it, I think I think a lot of publications and her okay. team has spoken and I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I even saw someone say that her team or someone, I don't know, allegedly, they were like, it's crazy that people took this long to put it together. But in the Arianator Nation, which she hates the fandom name Arianators, uh, but we don't have another name. I don't think me with Mac babies. Um, <laughs> no, Mac babies was cute. No, I no. like Arianators too. They're all cute. I wonder if she hates it. Cause there was a time where you just added Nader to every fandom. Yeah. Reminators. Yeah. Were you a Reminator? <laughs> it was Remin but I probably just got me there. I like Remikins better. <laughs> Remikins. As I've gotten older, I've learned the importance of being bilingual or knowing another language is seriously like the greatest power of all time. Like my kids will be bilingual. Um, now's the perfect time to introduce Rosetta Stone as the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app. And it truly immerses you in the language that you wanna learn. 
I feel like we've all heard of Rosetta Stone. I mean, if you don't live under a rock, you know what Rosetta Stone is. They are the trusted expert for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered. There's Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Japanese. We are going to Korea and potentially Japan very soon. And I think that it could be a really good time to brush up on our, yes. not even brush up, start learning so we could be able to speak to people. Idea. Mm. Us and our friends all each tackle one language. So wherever we go, someone <laughs> is fluent in the language. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> Sounds uh, harder than I think we're thinking, but I love that. There's also fast language acquisition. Rosetta Stone immerses you in many fast ways. There's no English translation. So you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. It's also an intuitive process. Pick up a language naturally, first with words, then phrases, then sentences. It's basically designed for long-term retention, unlike um, the curriculum that I learned in high school. <laughs> There's also speech recognition with a built-in true accent feature that gives you feedback on your pronunciation. It's super convenient. There's desktop and app options, and it's an amazing value. There's a lifetime membership with all 25 languages for any and all trips and language needs in life. Normally, it's a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $149. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. That's $149 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem for 50% off at rosettastone.com slash basic today. Within the fandom, people were putting this together a while ago and there were blind items coming out over the past few months that he was like not being the best husband mm, allegedly allegedly mm -hmm. allegedly by all buying items are allegedly so it wasn't like super surprising but oh i heard that apparently and it's it's very parallel to the joe and taylor situation again this is all alleged but apparently allegedly dalton and ariana in covid i mean they got married in like 20 21 I want to say 2020 mm -hmm. and so obviously like their relationship mm -hmm. was also very quick and they got married very quickly and a lot of their relationship was in COVID very similar like to Joe and Taylor where like Taylor was in hiding and then COVID hit and when obviously you know everybody's out and about again Taylor's obviously having this massive tour and being oh the God. biggest star she's ever been Ariana's obviously like gone filming Wicked being absolutely huge star and apparently both of them like weren't prepared Couldn't for the, their it. level of stardom. I saw that people were saying that Dalton was like, um, not comfortable with like the security being around all the time and like not mm -hmm. aware that she'd be gone so much, which I also understand to a level, like part of me wants to be like, how do you not know? They're like the biggest stars ever, but it's similar to people that don't have kids. Like I've mm -hmm. never dated an A-list celebrity who, yeah. and I don't know what that life is truly like. So I understand to a degree, but I mean, for safety reasons, of course she's gonna have security around. She has like crazy stalkers. It's just like what comes with things, it, you yeah. know? Like I would never wanna tell my significant other like, hey, I need you to fully delete your social medias and never post anything about us. But also like when you're that level, you kind of have to like think about stalkers and like all that stuff. I really want her to find love. I really do. She will. Like she has. I told Cal, I told Cal, <laughs> sorry, this is mean. I was telling, I was like really upset about them getting divorced and I was laying on the bed and he came in and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, "There, Ariana's getting a divorce. And he was like, she'll be fine. She's Ariana Grande. I don't know about him though. <laughs> <laughs> Which if he was a bad husband, then shame on him. This is obviously a, a common thing we see with very A-list female um, celebrities. Is there someone on that level of a Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande who's actually in a marriage that we know of? That's like, I guess Beyonce, but it's very obvious that like Jay-Z's cheated on her. Allegedly, obviously there's like, they have their own issues too. I think it's just really hard to date anyone on that level, let alone when it's the female making literally like what, a, almost a billion dollars, like yeah. hundreds of millions. Like I can't imagine. I feel like, and that's like the, the, go to publicist reasoning why people break up, celebrities break up, it's scheduling conflicts. But I, and I know it sounds bullshit, but the more that I think about it, with being an actor, with being a pop star, with just being a celebrity, your schedule's changing so much. I'm sure you get so used to like a certain lifestyle that you have. I'm sure, like, obviously COVID was very different from other things, but even like um, filming on location somewhere and getting used to like, maybe you meet someone on set or you get to like live, you live in Vancouver for so long mm -hmm. and you get so accustomed to that and then you're dating and you're so happy, but then 
that show's over. You book a new show, you book a new movie, you go on tour, like it changes. And what you're so used to in that relationship dynamic that you had for so long changes. So I guess it makes sense to me to a degree. Again, we'll never experience it. I mean, I'll never experience it. Yeah. Maybe you will. Uh, and you take me on I, tour. She did sit next to Andrew Garfield also at Wimbledon. And I am also rooting for that Wait. because I love Andrew Garfield. Okay. I just saw a quote about Andrew Garfield literally this morning that broke my heart. It was talking about his, I want to say it was his grandma passing away. Oh, his mom. Or his mom passing yeah. away. And he was like, I want to keep the grief I feel every day because that's just things that I never said to her. And I don't want to like let go. Of. Like literally it broke me. I was getting my glam done and I was like, don't cry. Don't cry. I was like, wait, that's so sad. That, but it's so deep and so true. Like the grief you have is like stuff that you're like, sorry, this is such an interesting episode. Well, <laughs> did you, have you ever seen that clip when Emma Stone won? Yeah. He's in the front row. Yes. They did that to oh, us. Oh, they, knew. they, they knew. knew. He's so sweet. And I, I also love him with um, Amelia, the chicken, chicken watch girl, the uh, interviewer. You got to watch it. Chicken it's, watch. Yeah. She's like a, is that what it's called? Chicken show? Something like that. Okay. I'm so sorry. But it's like an interview show and she's so quick-witted and dry and hilarious and like they have good chemistry um that bobby girl who interviewed drake oh my god obsessed with her too. i want her on the podcast i think i would cry because i would like i i don't have that humor but she's so funny no i think truly it would just be so dry like it would I don't even know if it would be a good episode because we'd just be laughing. I'd be like, ha ha. And then she wouldn't laugh. And I'd be like, ha ha, no, seriously. And she's then I'd be so like, oh, like, no, she's so good. I don't know how she keeps the face for so long. I could tell with the Drake one, you could tell she was like starting to break a little bit. So she'd like bite her lip or something, but she did such a good job. I the love nonstop comment. The nonstop I was going to say. He's like, you know, she's like, <laughs> I don't. She's like, we don't, we're not always talking about your music. Also, Drake wouldn't probably know what a fucking nonstop commercial flight even is. <laughs> I mean, he has to. He like, yes, he's a rich rapper now, but at one point he was just a small Canadian actor on Degrassi. Exactly. Okay, wait, let's end with who do you want Ariana to date next? Do you have someone else at your high school? Maybe? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one there. She clearly has a type. I, you think? I, I think, think it's, so. no, it's all over the board. Mac, yeah. Mac, Big Sean. Big Sean. Um, one of those Janoskian boys. I know I've said this at one point, but I was at the show when Bieber came out on her, was it the Moonlight Tour? Oh my God, when he was like all over I her. I was there was like, and I was like, oh, what's going on? I was there and I remember being like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> um, I don't know. Who could you see her with? I, you know what? I could see her with Timothy Chalamet. But obviously he's with Kylie, so maybe not. Speaking of Kylie, her and Jordan <gasps> were just spotted together. I saw that as well. I liked how, what was Jordan's next caption though? It was good. Ooh. It was like God's timing or something <gasps> like that. I was like, T, but she's thriving. I can't she's believe they're, I mean, obviously also they like, obviously hung out behind the scenes for who knows how long up until then. They're not gonna make their first meeting ever again. Also, it doesn't mean that they're best friends. Like the press is making it seem like, oh my God, they're reunited, like everything's good again. And I'm like, no, they just literally went to dinner. It doesn't yes, mean anything. Yes, but also when they were, they were like sisters. So I feel yeah. like when you meet up again, you just kind of fall back into that. Like yeah. I had a best friend from college who I didn't see for like four years and we hung out and I was nervous the first time we were gonna hang out again. Yeah. And it was n the most normal thing ever. Wasn't it Kendall who had dated Travis before? Travis Scott? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. But you know what really perplexes me? Huh. Travis Barker used to be obsessed with Kim. Yes. And wrote about her in his book? That's Wait. weird. Oh, supposedly, AKA allegedly, Kendall dated Travis first before Kylie. According to a TikTok <gasps> video, Kendall was on and off with Travis in 2016. Whoa, didn't know that. Also again, allegedly, we don't know shit. Allegedly. <laughs> the t the theme of this episode is we don't know shit. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, we don't know shit. Allegedly, we don't know shit. <laughs> Going back to Jordan though, I was just like, damn, I feel like they really like did her dirty. But yes, oh, I think they handled that so, I think they've handled a lot of things poorly. Yeah. I understand obviously being upset with her, but I just didn't understand not matching energy with Tristan because yes. as we know, Tristan is sometimes I'll just like be alone and I, he randomly pops in my head and I'm like, he is the worst person to ever exist. And then it no, sucks to one of the worst people. Because again, I don't know what it's like to have a child with someone where you're like, but for my kid's sake, I want them to have a relationship with 
their dad. But, but two yeah. things can be true at once. Yes. True. But you know what? I've actually been saying that to myself lately. I'm like, there can be two truths. Like, no, he can like fuck up a lot and be, and cause a lot of hurt to a lot of people. And you could also still want him to be a good fatherly figure to your kids. Like I, I get know. that, but I just didn't understand like why they being put so Jordan mean to as like, the face of it all. Yeah. And, and like, like whatever. she obviously fucked up, but she was also like, what, 21? She just seems like she's doing great now. She also came out the clothing brand. I don't know what it's called. They're cute. cute. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw that Chloe, did you know she like posts? She's like, so she's so home goods. <laughs> she posts like little like Quotes. graphics a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so she posted a few yesterday say, and it essentially was like, you, you can forgive people. Wow. T. Imagine like she's back in the crew. That'd be really crazy. I hope that's her decision. Like, you know what I mean? Well, also there's a world I'm sure where Kylie can be friends with her and she doesn't, she doesn't come, come around like Chloe or anybody. Yeah. Yeah. They are very interesting though. I think this, all this news came out like yesterday or something. And I was like, wow, it's been a minute since a whole bunch of news like drops, like pop culture stuff. Yes. Sophia. Well, yes, Sophia. But I, you know what I just thought? I just had a, an epiphany. You know how people are saying the Kardashians are in their flop era? Yeah. Do you think that this was orchestrated to bring them out of their flop era? Honestly. And they look like nicer people. They look like forgiving people. Yeah. Prediction? I mean, prediction. Prediction, was it filmed? No. Prediction. prediction will she be in the next Kim's season? Kim's going to be seen at eras. No. No. Taylor would literally be like, this is my band list. It's these people. Oh. I can't I can't even imagine that. But maybe North will be there. This North whole, loves Taylor. So, so is Penelope. Oh my God. I just can't imagine that. Someone from the Kardashian clan will be seen at Eras Tour. On the LA shows? Yes. Oh my God. Tea. I'm calling that now. I can't I can't oh my God. I think they're on their like Hey girl, let's look forgiving like tour. I don't know. Well, it's not that they need to be, they should not be forgiven for the Taylor thing. That was like really bad. But how are you really? Oh my God. Honestly, good. I've, I've been in my stay at home era. <gasps> Welcome. The past few weeks, I haven't gone out once and I've been loving it. I've been also redoing my house. So I think I've just been excited to like, it feels like nesting. I was in just going to say you're nesting. <laughs> yeah, like no kid, but I'm just doing the nesting part. And it's been so nice. I've been to the farmer's market recently. Um, it's just, it's nice. I feel like also post traveling, I've just really been focusing on like getting tight and toned again and just getting sleep, filming. Oh my God, I'm actually ahead on my videos. <gasps> Insane. I feel like you, you feel so inspired and like, I just feel like you're getting shit done lately. I, I know. So it's been good. I also think it, it's nice too because. For whatever reason, this summer, everyone's traveling and it feels like I'm not missing out on like events. I totally agree. I feel like everyone's, every week someone else is gone. Yes. So I feel like less things are happening yes. because of that. So yeah, no, I think that's great. Also after traveling, especially as much as you did, I'm sure just being home. Bitch, you were just in New York. <laughs> I was in New York, but I feel like you traveled like long trips back to back to yeah, back. So. And so I'm sure just being home. So, I mean, I agree. Being home is so nice. Yeah. So honestly, I feel like things have been really good. Good. Yeah. I'm so proud. And do you feel like your spark is back with YouTube and things? Yeah. I, I don't, it's so weird because I literally was on this crouch, like crying, being like, oh my God, is this what I, I have the same thing? Is this what I want to do? Like, how long can I do this? Is it, is this done for me? And my gut was like, no, you're just like, go through it, whatever. And it, again, it's so easier now looking back being like, oh no, I was just down bad and needed to be re-inspired. And now I, I feel re-inspired again, which Good. is exciting. You said something that really stuck with me on Victoria's podcast yesterday, where you were talking about the idea of needing to recharge mm -hmm. and how obviously we've been doing this for so long. And I, it really stuck with me because I don't think in that way. And I should, where I feel like, um, I've never really taken a break during the time that I've been posting. Like maybe the most would be like a few weeks because of like a video went wrong or mm -hmm. something like three weeks. Tops, yeah. You're I'd say. always present. I'm always posting, but I'm not always like super jazzed to post. Cause mm -hmm. sometimes I like really love the ideas. And sometimes I'm like, okay, I just need to get a video out. Like it's been like three weeks. Like I really, I feel like I'm slacking. I should get a video out. But I liked what you said about like, take some time. If you're not loving what you're posting, take a step back, recharge and come back excited to post something. And I feel like I'm just still so stuck in that mindset of like when we started YouTube of everyone uploads weekly, you have an upload day, you have to upload on this day or not even just the day, but like you have to get a video up weekly. Mm -hmm. And so it's been hard for me to shake that idea, but I liked what you said a lot. And I oh feel like God, it's, I'm going to try and apply that. I think you're serious. Even if it's a two week break, cause let's be real. One week break does nothing. Cause you still need a video for that next week. Like mm -hmm. it two or three week break. It sounds scary. It's not. 
and actually have a break. Like be off socials, live your life, like go on date nights with Cal or whatever. And I think it'll, it's so much easier than you think. Cause then it's going to come to you and you're gonna be like, Oh my God, I really want to share this. Or I've learned this recently. And I want to help people understand this. And I even think and that's helped with pretty basic a lot where we are like, you know what, let's try not to talk about it outside of the studio. So that way when we come, we're like pumped about it. Yeah. I think honestly, like you would love, it's just your main channel. It doesn't have to be your vlog channel. Yeah. And I think it's so funny because the main channel causes me the most stress, mm -hmm. but it's the thing I post the least on. And it's the thing I've been doing the longest amount of time. It's like seen so many different renaissances over yeah. the years too. But yeah, I think it, it really like stuck with me. And I feel like watching you also take a break and like seeing your your drive and your spark and your passion has reinvigorated me. Oh my God, I love that. That means so much. No, truly, I'm so like excited for people. you. Thanks, Ben. I'm so excited for you. What kind of content are you making? Um, yesterday I just filmed another one. I started a new series, which honestly highly recommend Fun. it. Mm. Um, it's basically, I don't know what it's gonna be called yet, but I keep saying, what would Alicia's solo pod be called as the title? Cute. So I just like, I'm just in my room. I posted one already, but just talk like, it's kind of filmed like this style. And um, yesterday I talked all about social anxiety and dating. And it was so weird because this podcast has helped me film so much easier because it's so easy to wanna be like, hey guys, did it. And I was like, oh my God, hey, we're recording, like talking like this and just mm -hmm. real. And it was crazy because I've always felt like a main channel video needs to be so elaborate and amazing and produced and da da da. And then it was funny because that video, not only views wise did better, but the response and the quality of the comments were so good compared to like the room makeover I did the next week. And I was just like, damn, people just want a connection. Like it doesn't have to be how it used to be. Like, yeah. and it can be easier, but to us, we're like, this is just a sit down video. It's boring, but yeah. it's, it's, it's actually not the case. I love that. I like, I'm, I go in ebbs and flows with my love for YouTube. I always love YouTube, but like what I'm watching changes and right now and for the past like year or so I've been so into just like long vlogs if it's like 30 45 mm -hmm. minutes I'm like yeah because you can put it on and you can do other things listen and, and like yeah and walk around and get things done and I feel like that is what people are really looking mm -hmm. for now especially like for me I love TikTok but I get so overstimulated by it now I feel it drained. stresses me out and I heard someone say wow we're talking so much I heard someone say this about the difference between YouTube and TikTok is if I'm on TikTok for an hour, I feel drained. If I'm on yeah. YouTube for an hour, I feel inspired. Yeah. And I was like, I think truly that's why I still think YouTube is the best platform, especially for being an influencer or growing or having community because the whole point is to inspire people. Like when I'm on TikTok, like, yeah, I learn things, I forget about them and then it doesn't help my ADHD. And then the next thing I know, I'm like feeling depleted. Yeah. Um, where if I watch Cooking with Remy or something, I'm like, oh my God, maybe I'll make something today. Or like, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. like. So I think that's the, I, I agree with that. I think that's the difference between the two. It's so true. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and you know, when you just wake up already, you're just really tired or you already feel like, oh my God, it's been a day and I just woke up. Um, I mean, to be honest, the first thing I do when I wake up is I check my phone and then I, once I get through messages, I'll start watching TikTok and I'll just like have it going while I'm brushing my teeth or whatever. But the, I've been very in tune lately with like when I wake up feeling depleted, if I start watching TikTok, mm -hmm it will give me an anxiety attack. Like a true, like, oh my God, I can't well, breathe right now. It puts you in a reactive state. Mm -hmm. Like you shouldn't check your messages on your DMs, your messages. And before you open things, get anxiety. And what doesn't help is when you are still, it's, it's a proven thing. And I would love to get someone on here who actually knows about it more, but like those first few hours before and after bed, not being on your phone and actually making conscious de decisions for yourself and being proactive versus reactive like the imagine the first, right after you know you wake up and you see someone post a hot ass bikini pic and then you start tearing yourself apart like that's the the absolute worst way to start a day you know what I mean mm -hmm. or like just being on edge and I feel the exact same way when I just like sit and scroll and even last week I did a whole like morning routine where I wasn't on my phone till like 1 p.m. because I was like, I am so disgusted with myself with how much I've been on my phone and I've wasted time and energy and just so much. And it's like bothering me now yeah. because I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it keeps my attention for two seconds, but then I'm just like, why am I still scrolling? If someone texts me and I don't reply within 10 minutes, even less than that, like two minutes, I feel so badly. And it stresses me out. I feel like I always have to like be checking all my DMs and replying to all those or checking my texts, making sure I have no 
unread emails. I'm making sure I'm always like answering everything. And it obviously causes me more stress. But on the flip side, if I send a text to anybody and they don't reply for like three hours, I'm like, oh, no worries. This exactly. Is totally fine. So I'm like, I need to start applying that to my workflow or my just like even, communication style. I think last thing and then we'll end this because it's such a long episode, but um, even instead of feeling like it has to be all or nothing, like instead of being doing a whole day without social media or not going on your socials for, you know, whatever, um, just a morning be like, okay, after I brush my teeth or like after I have my coffee after lunch, then I'll go on it. Or after I, I go, go for a walk. And I think that makes it easier for me because obviously I'd love to be like, I went a whole day without it, but that's just so not realistic. And even two hours, oh my God, my favorite feeling ever is when I'm home and then I'm like, wait, where's my phone? Oh my God, I haven't been on it for a few hours. And it's like still in my purse from when I came home from wherever. I get so excited yeah, and that's so, I'm, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. So point being, baby steps, even just an hour. Baby steps. Yeah, I think the few times in my life where I've woken up and not checked my phone until I've had my coffee, that's like full wake up, shower, brush my teeth, See your make dog, breakfast, pet, your dogs, pet yeah. my dogs, have my coffee, then I look. I have such a peaceful start to my day versus waking up and just being immediately flooded with overstimulation. Mm -hmm. What helps me too is knowing, oh, the same amount of DMs, the same amount of likes, the same amount of everything is still going to be there when I check it. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> me, it's like when I leave my phone for six hours, I'm like, I have so many messages and no, then I have I, none. Oh no, mine's always from my mom. But I always feel peaceful. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, wow, like I don't need to freak yeah. out like that which is true. And I'm going to remind myself of that more frequently. Same on that perfect note. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if you're not following us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe because why would you not want to watch this on YouTube? Agreed. You could see my slick back bun. No, your hair. I like your hair back. Thank you so much. Your, your hair, hair looks, looks sexy when it's pushed back. <laughs> Ew, Chugi. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> Live, laugh, love. Live, laugh, Chug.